and we welcome Alex Haddad, Canada Research Chair in eHealth Innovation at the University of Toronto. Alex will be our guide this week as we explore new ways of reimagining and reworking our healthcare system. Tonight, we're looking at expectations. We want our healthcare system to accomplish many things, right? The question is, are we looking in the right direction? Hi, Alex. How are you, Pia? I'm very well, thank you. Let's begin with lay the groundwork for me. How would you describe the current model of our healthcare system? Misaligned with what we need. How so? Almost completely. Uh, most people today are uh, living with chronic diseases when they think about the health system or when they need it. And we have a system that was and still is very good at dealing with acute conditions. And this is a legacy from the middle of last century when we conquered most of the things that could kill us um, uh, at an early age. But uh, by the time of the end of the 20th century, we had almost doubled our life expectancy compared with the year 1900. And suddenly, we found ourselves with a lot of need symptoms that were making us feel unwell for which the health system wasn't prepared? I think, as you say, when people think of health or health care, they think of acute problems and acute treatments, things like heart attacks and strokes. And you say there's not enough focus on chronic care. Why not? Well, because um, most of our training programs, most of our incentives are designed to diagnose people. What's wrong with you? to figure that out and then fix you. When we cannot diagnose very clearly, or even if we have a good diagnosis and we cannot find the cure for your problem, then most of the training we received as health professionals doesn't work very well. Where's the disconnect in that? The disconnect uh, has to do with the fact that we were very successful. So this is what in Spanish we call death by success. And I think in English we, we tend to, to use that term too. So we were so good at dealing with infections and with uh, acute, uh, scary problems mm. that the system became very good at that. In fact, we have an industrial health system, healthcare system, that is very good at giving um, very specific tasks to the people we call health professionals, and, and they perform them very well when the problems can be fixed. When the problems cannot be fixed, then that machinery that we designed to increase the number of people who could benefit from those wonderful cures that we discovered in the 20th century, mm. then that production line starts to, to feel the stress. And, and then patients start to go through these revolving doors, okay, going from one specialist to another, from the family doctor to the hospital, from the hospital to the community, and the um, and met expectations start to build, and people start to feel frustrated, and it's not just the public. We, felt, we feel very, very frustrated when we cannot find a solution to one or more problems that, that people bring to us. We are going to talk about frustrations as we move through, through tonight and through the rest of the week. But I want to ask you, where else do we shine? What is the current health system doing well? Let's talk about the positives. Okay, so uh, I would say that uh, we are very good uh, with emergencies. We are very good uh, with uh, diagnostic tests. We are fantastic, and, and in fact, we are very eager to get the latest mm. piece of technology that helps us peer, peek into our bodies to try to find out what's wrong there. Uh, we are very good in research to try to, to study projects uh, and to study problems. Intensive care. Yeah. And, uh, and again, for acute problems, I think the system is, is as good as, as it could be. Uh, once again, as soon as we go beyond acute problems, that's where the problem is. That's where the problem is. You, you said it's not just a, a problem for us as patients on the receiving end, but also for health care professionals. How good are they uh, at dealing with chronic care? We are not very good, uh, and we haven't trained to do it. For example, in Canada now, if you are a medical student or a nursing student, you would get a fraction of the training on the management of pain than a vet student would get. Hmm. So those people who are training to deal with cats and dogs and horses get three to five times more education on how to manage pain that is affecting as a chronic problem probably 30% of the population. And uh, we are facing a, an epidemic of obesity. We are not spending enough time in our training programs to talk about nutrition. So I think we have a very good acute disease management system. But we have serious problems with what I would like to call 
uh, health literacy for all. Health, when we focus on what health means, which is much more than the absence of disease. Doctors, I want to talk specifically about them because, again, I think when most people think of healthcare, they think of doctors. They don't think of all the other health professionals that, that are involved in our healthcare. How comfortable are doctors, in your opinion, of, of dealing with the issue of chronic care? Very uncomfortable. Why? Unless you're a geriatrician or you're doing palliative care or you're a general internist, those, those physicians uh, tend to devote their lives to supporting people, to consoling them, to try to relieve symptoms. But if you are um, a general practitioner who works on a fee-for-service mode, and you have consultations that last less than 10 minutes on average, which is the typical duration in most high-income countries, and you have people with multiple problems, with symptoms that don't seem to be getting better, then it's very frustrating because our knowledge base is not very good either to handle those. Even if we look, if we look at research, for example, fatigue is a, is a very important symptom for people with chronic diseases. You feel tired with lack of energy. We have almost neglected it completely. Is it fair to say that some of the fault or responsibility lies with doctors themselves, or is this a systemic problem? Well, it's a, it's a systemic problem because once uh, 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 we put at our educational uh, the level of the educational system, we put very little emphasis on chronic diseases. Our payment systems are not designed to, to deal with long-term, recurrent, mm. difficult problems that will not go away because these chronic conditions, by definition, are incurable. And that, you see, understanding that they cannot be fixed is probably at the root of, of our frustration. Mm. Okay? Because the public expects health professionals to know what's wrong and we know what's wrong most of the time. But then once we figure out what, what is wrong, to find the solution to, to make it go away. But when things don't go away, then we say, they don't know. And then I need to go somewhere else. And we go to the internet. And then we check uh, natural health uh, remedies. And things don't go away. And, and, and it keeps building. And, and we keep going around and around and around. And, and it might be easier at some point to accept Mm. That, that this is a fact of life these days. But is it not a reasonable expectation as me as a patient when I get sick to expect that I go and I get treated? Is that not a reasonable expectation? If you have a curable, fixable problem. Mm. But as now uh, um, a big proportion of the population is, is living with chronic incurable conditions, then you need to understand that if that is the case and you have a disease that cannot be cured, you would have to... Uh, one, do everything that is in your power to eliminate unnecessary suffering, like the management of symptoms, the stress associated with living with a disease and realizing that you are not immortal and invulnerable. That's very difficult for us to, to understand. But at the same time, that is also very important to, to figure out ways in which you can cope with what I would like to call uh, unavoidable suffering. Okay? So we should do everything we can to fix what's fix fixable, to eliminate unnecessary suffering and to learn how to live with those things that will not go away. So we need to take more responsibility. All of us. When we say we, it's a big we. Mm. It's not we as members of the public or as patients, but we as health professionals or politicians or policy makers, because the system needs to change drastically, you see, radically to accommodate the new needs of the 21st century. Where do we start? By understanding that we are paying the price of our success in the 20th century, that um, at least 30%, if you take a, a group of people in, in almost any society, 30% will be living with at least one chronic condition. That if you reach that wonderful age that we call retirement age, in Canada, 90% of people will have at least one chronic uh, condition. And, and that's a fact of life today. How hopeful are you that we can shift, that we can adjust and, and realign our expectations? Not very hopeful. I am a cheerful pessimist, <laughs> so I, I don't expect major changes because when you're dealing with systemic problems, they take a long time if they ever okay, go away. And everybody feels that the responsibility belongs to somebody else. And for our political leaders, it's very difficult to handle this because um, the idea for them, as it would be for most health professionals, is to have cures so you can live your life in whatever want, way you want. You can, you can eat anything you want. You can have any uh, genetic uh, uh, background. And if you have a problem, we'll jump in and fix it. 
As soon as we depart from that, as soon as we move away from that, then uh, decisions become very unpopular. Okay? So most uh, communities uh, would like to have a hospital with specialists of all sorts in their environments, in their context, in their cities. Um, that could be detrimental. Okay? So we should be putting perhaps a lot of uh, effort in building strong communities with people who can support each other and with health professionals who are not considered as gods anymore. Okay. I, I guess I wonder, I mean, you talked about how we have an in industrial, industrial age sort of system, but where did we go wrong along the way? Why, ha why have we gotten so far off the path of getting it right? Well, it's called inertia. If something works and works well and works well for a long time, it would continue along that path until it is absolutely evident that that path is not appropriate anymore. And then efforts would need to be made to put it uh, along the, the, the new one. So we're not there along the path. No, we're yet. very far uh, away from that. If you look at hospitals, um, I would say that hospitals today are good for only five things. And anything else is like going to the corner shop to buy milk by helicopter. So hospitals, for example, would be good for emergencies, for intensive care, for experimental therapies, for major surgery. And if you have crisis, if you have a chronic disease and, and you have a crisis, you, you become decompensated, then a hospital might be the best place for you to go. But apart from those five things, we have now evidence that you could be better off outside the hospital. But unfortunately, we continue to put most of our resources into an acute care model that has the hospital at the center. And we neglect all those wonderful options that we have now to get a much better deal outside those institutions. We as a public have unrealistic expectations, is what you're saying. What about healthcare professionals? I mean, are their demands just, are they demanding too much out of the system and what it can provide for them as professionals? Well, health professionals are trying to do their best. But they also find themselves in an environment that is designed to do something that doesn't match their own needs. You see, it's not very good for us to find ourselves as part of a production line in which uh, the, the relationship that was so valuable a couple of generations ago, you knew who your doctor was, you knew who your nurse was, you had a, a very strong bond with, with your health professionals. Now, this system, you see, has dehumanized most of us. But do individuals uh, want to change? Do those health professionals, you talk to them all the time, you're helping them find solutions to, to the overall systemic problems. Do they want to change? Well, we adapt. So, so a lot of people say, this is what we have. We have to live with this. I'm doing the best I can with what I found mm. at this time in this place. So uh, we have to get on with it. And a lot of people find satisfaction with the system as it is. But lots of people are, are dissatisfied, but they don't see a clear uh, way out. So uh, for nurses in particular, you see, it's, it's incredibly frustrating uh, these days. And, and there is a very high rate of, of, of withdrawals. People just say, I had enough, and, and, and they leave. And um, so health professionals uh, is a big, big term for physicians. And you asked me to focus on physicians. It's a little easier. Okay? We, get, we get compensated probably in, in better and more flexible ways than most of, of, of our colleagues. And, um, and we still have uh, at least the illusion of control. Yeah. The expectations sometimes are often said can't be met because of money, that, there's, that the money is the fix to solve all, all our expectations. Is that all that's needed? No. In fact, we can put the entire budget of Ontario or Canada into the health, well, not health, the disease, acute disease care system that we have, and it would not fix it because if you want to live forever, and you want to have solutions for any symptom that you feel, and pronto, those uh, uh, are in, belong to the realm of science fiction and, and fairy tales today. There are lots of people trying to work on, on achieving immortality and in eliminating uh, suffering completely, but unfortunately, I don't think we're going to see it in, in the foreseeable future. Alex Sadad, thanks for coming in tonight. We have much more to talk about throughout this week. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here.